In today's video, we're going to talk about connecting the M Audio Oxygen Pro to our computer, registering the keyboard and downloading the software, and then getting it connected with our DAW, which in my case is Pro Tools. It may be a different one for you, but my hope is whether you're on Mac or PC or using a different DAW than Pro Tools, so that you can follow these steps and it'll at least get you close to where you need to be. You may need to fiddle around a little bit, but hopefully this gets you 90% of the way and you can take the rest from there. So let's jump right in and plug in our keyboard. This is the first step and it's probably one of the most important steps is taking the USB cable that comes with the keyboard and on the back of the keyboard, you're gonna see a few different jacks. We've got a MIDI out, a USB and a sustain. The MIDI out is for more of a traditional MIDI interface. If you've got an audio interface with MIDI capabilities, you could plug through there to use it with the computer or a MIDI to USB converter. We don't need to do that because we have a USB plug here. But if you wanted to control another keyboard externally, you could plug into the MIDI out here, into the MIDI in of your other keyboard, and then use the M Audio Oxygen Pro to control your other keyboard. In our case, we're gonna plug the square end of the USB into the USB port. And while I'm here, I'm also gonna plug my sustain pedal in. So I've got just a regular old Yamaha FC4A sustain pedal. Any general sustain pedal will do. And we're gonna flip this back down here. Now that we've got this plugged in, we're gonna take the other end of the USB cable and we're gonna plug that into our USB port on the computer. Now I spent quite a bit of time yesterday playing around with getting it connected to the computer. So I'll be honest, I've gone through this whole process. I'll talk you through each step, but in my case, I've already done this on my computer because I wanted to speak from experience. So in my case, I tried plugging it into all the ports of my computer. I had some issues right off the bat getting the transport controls to work. And I finally figured it out after messing around with it for a few hours, trying some different settings. And I'll share those with you in just a little bit. But what I found is in my case, it didn't matter which USB port I plugged it into. I just had to make sure it was plugged in and turned on before I turned on my DAW. Now, the first time you plug your keyboard in, Windows is gonna go through its normal looking for drivers, setting up your hardware. Because the Oxygen Pro uses the universal USB driver that comes with Windows, it'll just set it up and there's no additional drivers that you need to install in order to use the MIDI capabilities of the keyboard. So your controller should have come with this little card which gives you instructions on how to get started. We're gonna switch over to the computer and I'll pull up that page and show you what that looks like. I'll also throw this link in the description below. So go to your browser. I'm gonna open this up and go to mAudio.com forward slash software download. And what it's gonna say is thank you for purchasing your M Audio product. If you don't have an account, you're gonna to need to create an M Audio account. You can do that using the link there. If you have one, then you log in. The next step is gonna be registering your hardware, which in our case is the Oxygen Pro. On the bottom of the keyboard, there's a sticker with the serial number. You're gonna need that in order to register it. Once you do that, you can go into your account and I'm gonna sign into mine. And once you've signed into your account, you're presented with a few options. One is my products. And once you register your keyboard, you're gonna see a few pieces of software listed in that my product section. If you haven't registered your product, you can click the register product link right there. So in my products, the very first option is going to be this um, M Audio software manager. So you're gonna to have to download that. It gives you the authorization code right there. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and open up the M Audio sound manager. That's gonna open up and present you with some options for instruments you can download, the applications that you can download. So this keyboard comes with MPC Beats. It comes with a version of Ableton Live Lite, and then it comes with a version of Pro Tools first. And so you can get any one of those by clicking get, it's gonna download it, and then you can click the install button, and that's gonna go ahead and install it on your computer. Because I already have the full version of Pro Tools, I'm not gonna download any of this software. I did download the Hybrid 3 Velvet and Mini Grand because I wanted to be able to demonstrate at least with a Mini Grand some of the capabilities of the keyboard in my full review coming soon. So the last thing within the software manager is up here in the top left corner, there's this gear icon. Go ahead and click that. And you've got an option here that says show advanced software. You're gonna to have to check that in order to see the preset editor that comes with the Oxygen Pro. If I uncheck this, notice that you can't really see that there's a checkbox there on my screen. So it took me a little bit to mess around with this clicking to figure out that, oh, 
there's a checkbox right there over in the right hand side. So fish around, if you don't see it, click around until you get that. Close this settings and then when you scroll down, you're gonna see your Oxygen Pro 25 editor. In my case, I've got the 25 key. If you have a different version, download that. But that's where you can get the editor to build custom presets for the controls on the keyboard. So now that we've got the keyboard plugged in, we've got the software installed to edit or build custom presets. Maybe you don't have a dock currently and you wanna download Pro Tools first, Ableton Live or NPC Beats, go ahead and download those, get those set up and ready to go. Once you've got that set up, we're gonna go into our DAW. In my case, this is Pro Tools. So go ahead and close the software manager and open up Pro Tools. One note here is to make sure that your keyboard is plugged in and turned on. There's an on off switch on the back. Make sure it's plugged in and turned on before you open up your DAW. I had issues with this yesterday where my DAW wasn't recognizing it when I cycled it on and off and it was having issues recognizing the Oxygen Pro. So I finally found that if the keyboard's plugged in and turned on before I even open the DAW, then everything seemed to work a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new session here. We're just gonna call this um, M Audio Test. I'm gonna leave all my settings the default and click Create. This is gonna open up a new session. And right away, you'll notice that the transport controls don't do anything uh, to my transport controls in Pro Tools, nothing works. So in order to get this to work, we have to set up our controller within the peripheral setup in our setup menu of Pro Tools. So go to Setup and then Peripherals. And this took me a few hours to figure out how to get this to work, but I finally got it by going to MIDI controllers and under Type, one would think that you'd select M Audio Keyboard. I could not get Pro Tools to communicate with the keyboard by selecting M Audio Keyboard. What I had to do is use HUI. So the transport controls and some of the functions that are not really MIDI related, but more control related, are sent via Mackie HUI to your computer. And a lot of the common DAWs are able to take those control messages and translate those to the DAW. The keyboard itself comes with a bunch of presets for various DAWs. I'll show you that on the menu in a second. But let's go into HUI and in the receive from, you're gonna have to choose MIDI in three. In your send to, choose MIDI out three. And then in your channels, your only choice there is to choose channel eight. So click OK. And now you'll notice if I click the play button on the keyboard, it's actually playing within Pro Tools. If I hit stop, it goes back. If I hit record, it arms for record. Click record again, it unarms. If I click loop, it changes my play from play to play loop. And my forward and back, if I tap them once, it jumps ahead by grid. And if I hold the button, it slides along to give me some finer adjustments within there. So right there, we've got our transport control set up. And this is really nice because you can just tap it on your keyboard rather than reaching for your mouse. Saves a little time. Another nice feature here are these transport controls over on the right, where we can switch between our mix and our edit views really quickly by just tapping these soft buttons here really quick to switch between them. I really like that feature because in Pro Tools, I'm constantly switching between my edit and my mix modes to take a look at things, adjust volume levels, etc. Now I won't dive too much into the details of all of the buttons and controls here in this video. I'll wait for my full review to do that, but let's go ahead and create a track here. I'm gonna create new, I'm gonna do a stereo track. And instead of an audio track, I'm gonna do an instrument track. I'm gonna click create. Notice we didn't really do anything to set up the keyboard for transferring MIDI from the keys or the pads. Pro Tools is automatically gonna pick up the MIDI messages being sent. You shouldn't have to do any additional setup there. The only setup is on the transport control setup within the peripherals menu. If for some reason the MIDI's not working, make sure that you've armed the track because with Pro Tools, it's not gonna receive any messages unless you arm the track. Second, make sure that you have an instrument selected in your insert. So right here, we're gonna go and select MIDI Grand just for this demo. It's gonna load right here. This little red bar is the loading. We'll wait till it's loaded to play it. But we need a virtual instrument and we need to arm the track here in order to play the instrument. So now we should be able to play the grand. Mm -hmm. 
So it's receiving our MIDI notes. If we don't arm the track, you'll notice that nothing comes through. It doesn't receive any MIDI notes, even though we have a virtual instrument on there. Just a little quick tip there. We can close this. We can go ahead and arm this track. Then we can go ahead and arm our record using the transport on the keyboard. And then we can hit play. We're recording now. We can hit stop and then we can play that back. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and adjust the volume, we could use the volume knob here and I'm gonna switch over to my mix mode. So watch this volume slider as I twist this knob here, the volume slider goes up and down. Now, if I wanted to adjust maybe the pan of this track, in Pro Tools, you have a left and a right pan. Other DAWs might only have one pan knob. But what we're gonna have to do is hold shift and click on the pad with pan below it. So now, if we adjust, you'll notice my left hand pan knob is turning. In order to get the right pan knob, click the shift, and that's gonna swap our pan knobs there, right? We can hit shift to go back, make sure we're 100 there. If we wanna go back to volume, just hold shift, tap volume, and we're back to the volume slider. So really easy to do some quick adjustments on your mix or on your controls, all using the keyboard. I don't have to use my mouse to do any of it. So that's really nice. Let's switch back to our edit mode. So now let's say we wanna go ahead and save this. What we can do is the DAW shortcuts over here, work with Pro Tools, hold Shift, Save, and if you go up to File, you'll notice that Save is grayed out because it saved it for us. Now let's say we move this over here and we wanna undo that. We can hold shift, tap undo, and it moves right back into place. Now a couple of additional settings that are gonna be important, especially for your transport controls, are right inside the keyboard itself. To access the DAW controls, to pick which DAW preset we wanna use with this controller, hold the DAW preset button, and it's gonna pop up with your DAW edit screen. Right now it's set to Pro Tools. We can navigate through those by twisting this knob. We have MPC, Ableton, Studio One, Reason, Cubebase, Logic, Bitwig, Garage, Reaper, uh, FL Studio, and then your custom preset. To select any one of these, click down on the select knob and that'll select that preset. The other setting that you're gonna to wanna to take a look at is inside the global settings. To get to this, hold shift, click global, and scroll all the way to the end where you're gonna see the PC setting. So press down on the selector knob and you can choose from Windows or Mac. This is especially important for these DOS shortcut pads over here. If you don't have the right thing selected here, these may not work for you. Go ahead, select Windows, and then to go back, we can go back here. Again, if I wanna go ahead and save this, I can just hit save here, boom, it's saved, and we're good to go. If you guys have questions, if you're using a different DAW, for some reason you can't get it to work, let me know in the comments below. We have a great community here. If I'm not able to answer it, hopefully someone else can. And be on the lookout for a full review coming really soon, as well as separate videos where I'll talk in depth about the chord, scale, and arpeggiation features that are built into the keyboard. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, stay inspired, and keep making that music.